In this tutorial we're going to get the actual chat head to come in and display a little text bubble then disappear and show a notification above the um, chat head profile picture. I've been referring to this here as a chat head before in previous tutorials which is wrong. It's um, I suppose you call it the avatar or profile picture. Um, so I'll just be calling it avatar from now on and calling the thing up here chat head which what it actually is. So straight away we're going to get started with creating a macro patch. In here we're going to get a 3D transformation and we're going to go into it and get a sprite. It'll become obvious later on where we're using a 3D transformation. Uh, for now I'm just going to bring up the sprite inspector and change it to 0.17. And also we're going to publish uh, firstly the interaction, then X position, also Y position, and image. So as we can see at the very bottom of our 3D transformation we have three extra values and also an interaction. Basically because we're doing this we can control the x y position of our sprite and when we want to click on it later to open up the message we want the sprite to also move up and this is quite tricky if you're going to be using if you're going to be dedicating the x y position to a different interaction um, such as bouncing in from the the right hand side so with a 3d transformation we can basically have two sets of x y positions um, which would be uh, up here, translation X and Y. Uh, so when we do click on it to check the message, uh, these two uh, translations here will come into effect and bounce the chat head up to the top of the screen. So we're going to get started here and um, get the chat head to come in from the right hand side into the left uh, so it's visible on screen. And what I'm going to do here is something a little bit different to what you saw in my demo. In that, in my demo, you just come in from the side quite linear in a linear motion, um, but it, that's not like the finished product uh, that we saw uh, Facebook reveal, which has the chat had come in in a circular motion. So we're going to do that now. Firstly, we're going to I'm just going to show you um, an easy way of doing this. As with everything in Quartz Composer, there's many ways of doing the same thing, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Basically, we're going to get a wave generator or LFO. And just to demonstrate, I'm just going to plug these in. And straight away you can see some motion. And they're both working on a sine motion at the moment. Sine wave. Uh, however, we change this to cosine. You can kind of see we're just getting uh, a circular motion. Um, just to make things a little bit prettier, we're going to bring in the chat head which is of my friend Dalo and we're going to connect that to image and we can see Dalo's head circling around <coughs> so this is obviously much too uh, big a circle to be working with so if we go into our properties here we can see uh, two things in particular which we're going to be work with, uh, working with uh, one of which is amplitude and the other is offset so basically the amplitude is like the radius so we change this down to 0 0.2 and also this down to 0 0.2 and we can see a much smaller radius um, offset is basically um, its distance from the center point so if we just change this to 0 for now and 0 here you can see that it's um, circling uh, a much smaller radius and around the center and of course if you want to you know, play around with it you can see that you could do something with maybe orbiting planets or something with a similar uh, method like this. Um, yeah, and you can also just play around with these and see various different uh, interesting motion sets like uh, square. Um, That's probably more of a square than the triangle, but there we go. 
Yeah, so what we want is the circle. So I'm just going to change that again. Sign. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm just going to unplug that for now. I'm also going to get a keyboard. And this is just um, to make things a little bit easier than what I did in my uh, original composition and also to um, just introduce another patch which is quite fun to use and easy to use and yeah so I'm just going to use this here and I'm also going to bring in a stopwatch which is vital for this part um, of the composition as a stopwatch basically it's a timer more or less so you can work a little bit more with time um, and might be a little bit easier for people who uh, are used to things like After Effects and very linear kind of programs it just makes things that small bit easier and structured and yeah this I think this is as close as you're going to get to something a little bit more uh, controlled in your composition so we're also going to get a JavaScript patch and um, JavaScript patch is very handy for um, doing things a little bit more detailed than what you would with a conditional so if we open up press command 2 we can see we already got a little pre-made function in here and uh, we have one output number which you can see here and two input numbers as you can see here 0 and 1 and because uh, these are arrays I think yeah so arrays start from 0 so you got 0 and 1 and we got a function here and uh, yeah so we're going to be modifying that uh, based on what times come in we're going to be just changing some values and now putting it here to our wave generator and eventually to our chat head. So I'm just going to get started on that now. So we're going to use the up arrow key to start our stopwatch and we're going to, be going to put our time into the input of our JavaScript and we're just going to uh, open this up and basically our input of uh, our input zero is basically our time so what we're going to do is when this is pressed it's immediately going to start the time um, so if we're, this is basically all I use in the JavaScript patches is if statements just to check I'm just going to copy this to make it easier Actually, copy this one. There we go. And if input zero is less than or equal to 0.5, our output is going to be the same as the input. So basically, as long as this, uh, the stopwatch is under 0.5, um, it's going to have the same. Um, output as our input so basically the time it's going to use the time until it gets to 0.5 so the stopwatch is going to be used until 0.5 and passed and the values are going to be passed through so we're just going to connect that actually uh, sorry first of all we have to uh, change our time base so basically the time base means that once we start this composition the LFOs kick in so the time base is the parent so the parent being the composition and once we do kick it up and start it the um, time automatically begins with this uh, so what we have to do here is the time base and change it to external so the time base is being or the LFO is being started by an, another patch essentially instead of being automatically uh, started by the run of uh, our composition so we're just going to change the time base to external again and we're going to connect that to here connect that to here connect to X position Y position and if we press up as you can see it started a little semicircle and we have to modify this so what I'm going to do is change some uh, parameters here first thing I'm going to change the amplitude to 0.29 and the offset to 0.57 And this is for the Y, I'm sure. Yeah, so for the Y, I'm going to change it to amplitude to 0.2. It's going to stay the same. And offset to 0 0.287. So now if we press up, sorry, if we press up, we're getting there. 